To be clear, I'm not proud of any of this. The wanton violence, the whiff of necrophilia, it isn't who I am. First thing, I'm just going to get this out of the way because then you won't be confused later and before I explain it. You may get a slight lispiness from me. And that's because I've had dental work done, particularly in extraction, which might be changing how I speak a little. I, I say might be, it definitely is right now. So I'm trying to be careful. It might be fine in the edit, knowing me, I'm overthinking it. But yeah, be aware that I might speak a bit weirdly for maybe a few videos, it might just be this one. And secondly, I'm fully aware this isn't Candyman. This is by design. I've done themed months before, and then something's come along that I've wanted to watch and talk about. And I felt bad that I couldn't just slot that in. So I'm allowing myself that. This is kindness to myself. We will have all the Candymans, they'll just be moved back a week. That's fine, I'm happy to do that rather than not talking about this because I watched it, I was like, I need to, I love this. But getting ahead of myself, what are we talking about? We're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, directed by Sean Levy, who co-wrote it with Ryan Reynolds, Paul Wernick, Rhett Reese, and Zeb Wells. Of course, Ryan Reynolds stars as Deadpool, we have Hugh Jackman back, we have Emma Corrin, Matthew McFadden, the return of Daphne Keane, which is beautiful. So many great people here, Marina Baccarin coming back, Rob Delaney, there's a load of characters also that I want to talk about later, so we're not going to talk about those actors. But this was one that, yeah, once it was released on home, I didn't manage to see it theatrical run for whatever reason. And I was like, well, I'll wait. I'll wait until it's home release. And I saw that it was. I was like, okay, I need to see this. I've seen the other two. I enjoy it. Seeing now that they can fold in the MCU stuff. It's like, I, 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 like I say, I'm raring to see how well they've done this and folded those things together. And they, they nail it. I can't think of a moment that I was like, nah, that's underwhelming. I mean, maybe Mr. Paradox was a little one note, a little two dimensional, but again, that's kind of by design. You know, he's almost like this comic booky villain because it's still a Marvel film, let's be honest. I didn't realize we'd have so much set up before we really got going with the Wolverine part of it, but I was fine with that. Of course, as many of us have been seeing over social media, you know, bye, 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 all over the place. And having actually now seen that in context, I totally understand why people are going. I thought it was like just over an action scene or something like that, like some other songs have been used in this film. But no, no, we have like grave defilement. And it's done so well, so funnily that you you kind of forget that that's what's happened. Like because we were told that, you know, we're not going to ruin the memory of Logan, all that kind of stuff. And then straight away, minute one, it's like, don't believe anything we've said in interviews and press stuff or trailers. What? Do you really think that someone like Deadpool would be like, oh, no, we can't dishonor the memory of, you know, Logan and that sacrifice. We're going to have fun with this. And that just really sets up the fact that, yes, Disney now in control of Marvel as a whole, rather than having him all over the place like at Fox, etc. They've gone, we understand this character. We're not going to standardise it. We're not going to make it pointless. Ryan wouldn't have done it if that was the case. He he would have gone, no, it's it's Deadpool as he is or not at all. And that really serves to make this worthwhile. Hugh coming back, you know, they make so many jokes about, yeah, <laughs> you're going to be doing this till you're 90. But I know that... He, he felt, you know, Logan's story had ended there. He was happy with that. That was his thing. And But he always said... If there's a good enough reason, we'll come back. It's like the Russos. We will come back for something like Secret Wars, and look, they're back for Secret Wars because of the whole restructuring around the Kang thing. But I did not expect... I knew there were some cameos and, and things like that. This is, you know, when I was talking about the casting at the start, I knew there were going to be some. Some I'd had spoiled to me, which was a bit disappointing, but there were some that I was not expecting at all. I love the fact that even in the you know short cycles now that exist on the internet, basically, if you haven't seen it in cinema within the first two hours, it's fair game. It almost feels like that sometimes. And I think that's wrong. I think we should all wait until home release, but that's not what this, that's not what this video is for. Fuck that. There we go. Oh, liberation. But still, I was not at all expecting to see Electra as played by Jennifer Garner. I was not expecting to see Wesley Snipes as Blade. And then the whole, I'm the only Blade, and the little look to camera of like, eh. I was not expecting this at all. And the, and the nod as well to the fact that Ryan Reynolds was in Blade Trinity, a film that you know, Wesley Snipes just hated doing. He did not get on well with the director. There was that famous thing where he's like, I'm not opening my eyes for the scene, so they did it CG, and you can tell and it's awful. Like, that is not a great film. And the fact that, you know, these two have kind of come together to now say, okay, this is our interactions on screen now. Remember this one. This is the one to use going forward. Of course, I did mention Laura coming back as well. 
But I was aware of, well, I was aware of Channing Tatum as Gambit because that's something that, you know, has been floated around, like maybe we'll do it. And then obviously the Fox deal, it's like probably not going to happen. But the fact that they were willing to go, do you know what? We'll give you it. We'll, we'll give you a moment. We will allow you to have this role. And it's even leaned into it. It's like, you know, all, all the things we've done in the past or would have done, you know. And the fact that they mocked the Creole accent, of course they were going to. But the one that I had spoiled, but then not, and you probably can tell where this is going because everyone's reaction was probably the same to this character's introduction, was Chris Evans. I'd seen a still of him stood there, you know, sort of in the outfit, etc. And I was like, oh, could it be like Nomad or something like that? You know, it fits with the style. And obviously that's what they were doing. They, they, were, they, were, they were knowing that, like, people will probably make that assumption. It could just be normal cap, but obviously it's adapted to life in the void. And then it's like, oh, there might be some sensitive language. And then it's like, no, 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 flame on. Like, hold on, this is the, this is the wrong guy. <laughs> this is not the person. And I fully respect that because, yeah, Chris Evans has one of those situations where he has played technically, now that it's all under one house, multiple characters whilst being the same version of him. However, because that's like the Fox uh, Fantastic Four universe, it doesn't matter. It's a variant. Johnny Storm could be a descendant of that universe's Steve Rogers. There's all these explanations you could give that would actually make it make sense in theory. Or you could just be like, well, it's rights issues, you know, sort of films made under one house, never thinking that they come together. But I love the fact that, yes, we get that comeback. Obviously, yes, we have Pyro and things like that. That was all over the marketing. But I really appreciated what this film did. It showed that Deadpool can be, and the other films have done it as well, Deadpool can be a really funny, over-the-top, absolutely asshole character in a lot of ways. But at the core, there is a good person inside. He's doing things because he thinks it's the best thing to do. Yeah, there's an element of he wants to have a laugh with it, but he cares for the people in his life. He cares for those who haven't gone, oh God, what's up with your face and just run a mile, you know, things like that. He is a good person, deep down. Wade Wilson is a good person. This is what Vanessa sees. And this film allows that. We get the best of both worlds as well. That ending, the sacrifice. But it's like, yeah, one of us would have been atomized, but we're two people with like amazing regenerative healing capabilities. We, we, we could tough it out, it's fine. And the good thing is, if either of them are up for it and it's possible in the future, we can potentially have them carry on. Or after Secret Wars, when the whole Marvel Universe is shook up again and we get a new sacred timeline of sorts, which is probably going to be the outcome, they could just go, no, our time is not passing the baton. I do love the fact that this gave time and space to some characters who have been brushed under the carpet, have been you know swept away. It would be nice to have Affleck come back, but we have a nod, you know, we have Elektra, that's the connection to that sort of universe of sorts. We have Blade, we have these things, and it is a nice sort of send-off. Like I say, if they can come back, brilliant. But if they don't, that's fine too. They want their ending and they've kind of got it. I respect what this film did. And I think the last thing I really want to say is we finally got not only the yellow, the blue trim, etc., but we also got the mask with those big sort of eye bits. I, I I mean, I was watching it at home. It wasn't like I sat in a theatre, but even I, I nearly just cheered, sat in my own room, which would have probably alarmed my partner no end. But still, I really, really appreciated that we finally got that. They joked about it so much, like, oh, not manly enough to wear yellow spandex kind of thing. And it wasn't spandex. You know, it was more in line with the rest of the MCU where it's it's armour. It's, it's protective. Not that Logan necessarily needs it, but it's it's functional as much as form. So yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine, I think, was a great threequel. I, you know, it wasn't perfect. I'm not really going to talk about the flaws because they don't matter. It hits mostly and it felt really, really rewarding as someone who's followed and watched all the different Marvel projects, even when they're in different houses. So this was, yeah, it's fan service, but done right. But I think I'll leave it there because I could gush for hours and I just don't have the hard drive space and I don't want to waste your time. I'll just do it more on my own time. I'll just keep thinking about it. 
So Candyman will resume as normal next week, but I appreciate very much you allowing me this little side quest into Deadpool Town. So until next time, as always, take care.